uh, it didn't take very much. It's, I mean, yeah, I saw what the, uh, I, I was watching what the measurement on this was. The toilet was generating 450 pounds of suction, but the scale shows it would take a fraction of that to break the seal. I'd say a woman this large, I mean, she'd be able to, you know, pull yeah. a cheek or move herself around a little bit yeah. and release the gap. I mean, we're talking, if someone really couldn't do that, we're talking someone maybe even twice this large. And then I'm not even sure they could fit in an airplane toilet. Yeah, I would agree. What's more, a properly functioning toilet creates suction for just two seconds. If something were to go inside the bowl and get stuck inside of there, uh, the pressure is probably about twice as much as a normal shop vac that you would have at your home. As you can see, there's no damage to a person's hand if they do put it in. And really all you do is get wet. Myth busted. And we're prepared to stake uh, Adam's butt on it. Are you ready to try it, you know, the real deal? Sure. All right. <laughs> now, what if, like, you're, if you're hurt? Like, what if, you, you know, this starts to feel uncomfortable? You gonna I'll, get... I'll take it gradually if I feel <laughs> things moving around that shouldn't be moving. All right. I, I'll disconnect. Because I can't hear you terribly yeah. well in there when I turn the switch. You'll hear the hot squealing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, contact. All right. Expose. Punchy. There we go. Wow, that was really significant. <laughs> that was, that was... <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that was impressively significant amount of <laughs> of, of suction. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing was vibrating with the pressure. We got up to five PSI. Yeah, it was, that was significant. Um, <laughs> I mean, I had my... <laughs> I'm trying to talk scientifically. I was able to use my arms, but it, like, if I didn't have arms, I would not probably have been able to free myself. <laughs> I'm not sure what we've proved here, <laughs> but at least it's good television. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Good work. This next legend involves, uh, is, is called the biscuit bullet, and it's actually pretty funny. The way I heard it, the sister of a friend of a friend went to the supermarket. And it was on a very hot day, and she hears this loud explosion behind her. And when she heard the pop and felt this sticky mass in the back of her head, she thought she'd been shot. And so she better just kind of hold still and try and hold her brains from falling out of her head until the, uh, until the paramedics get there. And when the paramedics pry the woman's fingers off the back of her head, they find that she's hanging on to this mass of raw biscuit dough. So what do you think we're going to need for this experiment? Well, we're going to need some biscuit dough of a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of these canisters of different sizes or different types and brands. So we've got to get a, a car. We can use my car to do this. I would think that we'd want to duplicate the car's interior temperature by, say, pointing heaters into the windows. Can we build a fire under your car, do you mind? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's no problem at all. <laughs> we would want to you know, get the temperature stable in the car and then move the biscuits right in and start the timer and see how long it takes them to go off. Step one in our recipe, getting the dough. I'm guessing that the, the different um, mixes, like you got your flaky biscuits and you got your, you know, super duper uh, buttermilk whatevers, you know, there, there's uh, there are going to be some differences in those things. It may be that there's you know, a certain amount of baking soda in one as opposed to another that would make it more prone to, you know, building that high pressure. 
The tins are meant to be refrigerated, so we'll keep them in a cooler until the experiment begins. I had an idea that, you know, it's not only the car's temperature, but potentially the freshness of the biscuits that might have contributed to their exploding. Um, to that end, we've had this one out for uh, 10 days. And we'll put that in our, you know, as one of our control groups to see if it explodes faster. Step two, mounting the tins in the car. I was thinking just in terms of being able to get a reasonable spread, maybe a rack of six. Maybe for fun we should like uh, make a, a thing like, you know, a, a holster, a holster like shotgun shells, like you're, you know, you're either, <laughs> nobody <laughs> moves, nobody here. gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right, wearing it under your vest uh -huh. while going through airport security. <laughs> Step three, determining the right baking temperature. So it's a, uh, it's a rare sunny day in San Francisco. The skies look really clear and it's nine on the nose. We're gonna place a thermometer in my car. We're gonna check back in a couple of hours and uh, see where we can get the temperature to. It's no coincidence that the biscuit bullet story first started making the rounds in the summer of 95, one of the hottest summers on record. So it's about three o'clock. The car's been sitting out here all day with the thermometer in it. Uh, temperature's hovering right around 140 degrees. To ensure a consistent baking temperature, we're gonna bring the car inside and heat it artificially. So Adam, let's load this thing. Okay. I'm hoping we see a pretty significant change in the heat kind of fast. Well, it, it ought to. These are radiant heaters, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, this is like the pure form of what the sun gives as far as uh, just, just what actually Come heats on. it up. We're up to 105.8. It's looking good. Maybe another 15 or 20 minutes. It's going to be hot in there. I don't know if you want to sit in the car. You know, wait for the biscuit toe, you know, or if I sit in the car, you know, maybe we take turns. <laughs> All right. I think from about a foot away, you know, it's, it's totally safe for us to, you know, be able to be the subjects in the car. I wouldn't load my shorts full of these things in a hot car. <laughs> That's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to smell really strong of, like, almost burning plastic in there, so I don't think either of us should sit in there. I, just, I made up a rack just to put my head in. Ah. All right. You mean you don't want to get hot is what you're saying? Oh, you can go climb in there, but it's... It's pretty stinky. You can suffocate. 120 degrees. Time to get baking. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Leading brand, flaky. Leading brand, buttermilk. Competitor, flaky. Competitor, buttermilk. Unrefrigerated. Small tin. And the clock is ticking. I'll say within eight minutes. Two hours, maybe three. Really? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, do I lose if I go over or if it's closer to eight minutes than two hours? So we're saying eight minutes or 120 minutes? Yeah. All right. I'll put a dollar down on that. Put it on the car. All right. Now we wait? Now we wait. All right. Do we see any physical change in them? No, I don't see any change in them. Your uh, dashboard's starting to melt, though. <laughs> I've been working in this area for about 30 years. I've never heard of this type of thing happening. But uh, as you think about it, you've got the potential there. Because if you have enough heat... Uh, the pressure that's created by the gas inside can cause that uh, container to pop. Uh. Do you think the flakies are going to go first or the buttermilks? The small one's going to go first because it has less mass. It's going to take at, at least a, a, probably a half an hour for the interior of those things to show hardly any change in temperature, mm, much less enough right. to, to work through. Yeah. 
I mean, it's, it's too much mass. It's still going to be way less than 120 minutes. We'll find out. The leavening agent is sodium bicarbonate, and uh, it is reacting with an acid to produce uh, carbon dioxide, CO2. If it is not released, you're going to create pressure in that container to the point where, as the reaction continues, that container can burst. Whoa! <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> what? You know what happened? What? It jumped out of the rack. That's the small oh. can that was in the rack. It jumped oh. out of the rack and into my cup well, holder. I'll be darned. <clears throat> and so we so where where was our clock? Where where were we at? We were at like 58 minutes on the nose. So you won the bet then. Ah, yes. yeah, in fact I did. I'd like so to you win won that bet. one before it bakes dough into my cup holder. Although I was right about which one was going to go first. You were absolutely right. What? That was kind of spectacular. I mean, we're missing a whole tin. I don't even see it in there. Adam, which tin was it? Uh, that was the unrefrigerated. That was the unrefrigerated flaky dough. Well, now, there you go. I mean, it blew the top right off of that thing. That was the unrefrigerated leading brand. I mean, this is stupefyingly boring, but, you know, things are blowing up in my car. What could be better? Whoa! It's 137 degrees right now. Well, that seems to be the butter zone. I mean, everything's happened above 133 yeah. degrees. <laughs> Yay. We should do this in Vegas, and then we can say, I went to Vegas and I blew some dough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a spectacular one. Whoa. Oof. Oh, man. I definitely could understand how you'd mistake this for brains here. What no, do I, no, I'm not going to do anything with it. Well, no, feel it. Feel it. I agree with me. Yeah, it's, it's definitely brains. Whoa! What, did another I, one go? I was, I saw that. No. Yeah. Did look, it look cool? Yeah, it's a, that one spewed. Oh, man. That one spewed pretty good. That tin is just, like, that one decimated. Not. No, it, that, one, that one was pretty energetic. I saw what it, 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 it like, uh, ricocheted off the back of your seat. Like Really? Yeah, and you can see bits of it. See that little speck that's yeah, left Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Uh, that and, might be our, uh, our smoking gun. The guys thought there might be a difference between flaky and buttermilk. Seems they're wrong again. Ho oh, ho! No! Wow! That just went everywhere. I mean, I just saw it vaporize. Look, it's in the front seat. Yeah, the whole can landed in the front seat. The whole can landed in the front seat, which means it had to come across this way, yeah. easily hitting the head. Yes, there can be accidents, but I've never heard of an accident like this. Um, I wouldn't worry about being hurt. Uh, I may have a premature bursting of my container, but I wouldn't worry about wounds from shrapnel from my dough. Of course, I don't leave my groceries in the car at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or higher anyway, because there are other problems we can run into with food products and microorganisms. There you go. I mean, I think, I, I think we've definitively proved that this is entirely not only plausible, but possible. Yeah. I think, without a doubt, a can of biscuit dough has exploded in somebody's car. I mean, in a hot car, a can of biscuit dough will go off within three hours, three and a half hours. This is something of a first for Mythbusters. We can show the myth is physically possible, but there's no hard evidence that it ever happened. I tried to track it down. I tried to find the friend of the friend. I couldn't do it. I tried to find the location where it actually happened. I couldn't. I looked for police reports. There were none. And the truth is, this didn't happen. There was no woman so stupid that she thought she was holding raw dough on her head. And that's kind of nice to know. All right, ready? Ready. Okay, you're watching Mythbusters on the Discovery Channel. So, The Falling Lawyer, what's the story? Well, the story goes that uh, there was a lawyer on the 24th 
floor of a, of a high-rise. He was showing off, showing off.